Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So it's the 1st of April 2024 and that's not a joke and today I'm gonna take a look at this one. It's a Commodore 64 and it looks to be very bad shape and it in fact does not work so I need to take a look at this one and see if I can fix it and make it look good again. So I recently bought this machine from a seller here in Norway and uh, yeah, it is not working and uh, I briefly tested it, it was dead and it's quite dirty as you can see uh, the keyboard is uh, filthy. It has this kind of uh, like a, a bird mark where it looks like the plastic melted but that's uh, probably just from a cable that was lying there and making a uh, some kind of chemical reaction. Yeah, there's a yeah same type of burn mark there as well. So let's hook it up and see if we get any life out of this. But apparently it doesn't power on. This video is sponsored by PCB Way, and I just want to say thanks to them for supporting my channel. As a hobbyist, I uh, often find myself in the need of some PCBs for various projects. And of course, PCB Way is my favorite uh, PCB manufacturer. Not only do they provide prototypes PCBs for reasonable prices and with uh, quite amazing shipping times, they can also provide you with other hobbyist needs like uh, advanced PCBs, PCB assembly, SMD stencil, CNC machining and 3D printing and various other products and capabilities. Also check out their shared project site where you can find a lot of ready-made designs for PCBs. So go ahead and visit pcbway.com to check out their services. Now back to the video. Well, <laughs> apparently it does. What the heck is this? I just tested it before and uh, there was no life in it. It's working! <laughs> Alright, that was it for this video, so <laughs> thanks for watching. No. <laughs> oh no, it's just me, I'm a bit confused. This was uh, another machine I bought a while back ago, before the one I was supposed to be <laughs> testing now. <laughs> so this is the one that's dead. It says here dead, no LED. So and it's missing uh, one uh, key here. This one is the one I paid 50 euros for and uh, was completely dead. This one, as you can see, it is working, but uh, it needs some uh, restoration work. So I guess we make this into a two machines video then. I'm gonna restore this a little bit, clean it up and then see if I can figure out what's uh, wrong with uh, this one then. So that's how it goes when you have too many machines and uh, too much of a mess up here in uh, <laughs> the storage department of the lab. All right, let's hook up this one then. And this one uh, supposedly does not work. Well, 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 look at that. This one too is working, I kid you not. I know the power LED is even on here. So this for sure, it was dead. It says here on the note, dead, no LED. So what should I do then? Should I just uh, cancel this video? <laughs> or should I uh, take a further look on uh, these machines? Okay, I think I do it into uh, two computer restoration video. This one needs to be fixed and replaced. It is working as you can see and the keyboard seemingly is fine. No, return does not work. Cursor keys does not work. Delete works, home works. Okay, if you push it really hard then it works. <laughs> So now it turns on every time and all seems good. So <laughs> kind of a disappointment there. I was hoping for some uh, fault that I could uh, fix. <laughs> 
All right, but uh, I'm, I think uh, a working Commodore is uh, better than a non-working. So we're just gonna work with what we have. I'm gonna start with the bread box one and take it apart and see how it looks inside. And uh, yeah, start cleaning it up a little bit. Yeah, just gonna open it up. Uh, if there ever were uh, one of those warranty stickers, it's gone now. It says here made in England and uh, Serial number starts with 2.2 million, so yeah, nothing special about that, but uh, perhaps the motherboard is a little bit special, we'll see. Judging by the sound of the screws, if you hear them pop, that's an indication they have never been uh, opened, or at least not been taken out for a very long time yeah same on that one i learned that from adrian black <laughs> the case is a bit yellowed i think uh, yeah definitely the keycaps the letters are very yellow they should be white these are more white but uh, all the others are yellow so let's pop this top cover it should pop out or you might break <laughs> the fastenings. Now, this was very nicely. All right, we have a lot of dust. Take out the keyboard. Oh, that's really stuck down there. Oh. And nothing's broken looks nice all right so what do we have here we have a regular 250 425 motherboard nothing particularly special about this made in hong kong and a lot of uh, dust bunnies <laughs> so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take this down to my garage and uh, blow it with compressed air and there's only one socketed chip and that's the SID chip over there and yeah probably the WIC2 chip is also socketed doesn't seem like the heatsink is touching the chip anymore there's uh, some leeway over there a lot of dust here otherwise everything seems to be all right uh, yeah the RAM is NEC all the chips looks to be original seems like uh, nothing has ever been done to this uh, machine except uh, a lot of dust entering so now we can remove this um, paper shielding here no need for that it's even taped in there old sticky tape has a black layer I, I have never seen that before it also has some metal part there so seems to be uh, some other kind of <laughs> shielding I have never seen before on other machines not useful at all I have uh, blown away most of the dust I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit with some alcohol just to remove some uh, remaining dirt or anything yeah just swipe over it with some uh, cotton swabs. Now most of the loose dirt is gone. Yeah, that's a little bit some blackness still there. Yeah, so it looks all right now, cleaned up. I started my desoldering station, as you can hear, and just gonna remove this uh, shield. Uh, for one, it doesn't uh, have any function as you can see it doesn't touch the, the chip anymore second I just want to take a look and clean up underneath it it's uh, soldered on both sides So this is the 
simpler version of this motherboard where you have uh, the WIC2 and all the clock genera generating circuitry uh, moved into one single chip, the 8701. Everything looked all right there, and now I'm just gonna clean a little bit off uh, all the different contacts and uh, yeah, use some contact cleaners. There's some hair there. For the edge connectors, you can use a rubber, just uh, a little bit of um, electric cleaner contact cleaner and then a rubber that should remove any blackness on those yeah you can see those are kind of black i don't want to use um, the fiberglass or any abrasive tool on this because that will um, take away the gold from the contacts from the fingers if you use a rubber and some uh, contact cleaner it will get shiny and clean. Yeah, that looks nice. Clean up the rest of the contacts and uh, the switch. If we can get anything inside it, I'm not really sure. Maybe something will go inside it. Let's take a look at the RF modulator can here. I, I usually never do anything with it. Uh, there are some electrolyte capacitors, but uh, rarely any need of uh, replacing those. Uh, anyway, I'm thinking instead of using the old RF modulator, I'm just uh, using, I'm, I usually just replace it with a modern variant. So as the caps looks all right and uh, everything looks okay, just gonna clean it a little bit inside and uh, that's it. All right, since the machine is uh, working very nicely now, I am not gonna recap it. Uh, sometimes I do it, but I don't think I, I don't think I have. Uh, all the necessary caps right now. One thing I like to do is to reflow um, yeah, the connectors for the joystick and the power and uh, power switch because they, <laughs> they get a lot of stress by pulling cables out and in and on and off. So yeah, that's just one thing I'm gonna do. Um, Just heating them up and uh, adding a little uh, extra solder. All right, I think this uh, board looks nice. I think we've done enough for now. I'm gonna put back the original heatsink of the Vic chip. Just gonna add a little um, extra thermal paste. Oh, this thermal paste has gone a little bit bad. I need to push out something before I can use it. So now it looks better. And this one should go right on top, but uh, it didn't touch uh, the metal. So yeah, I'm just gonna bend it down a little bit. <laughs> I'll remove the old uh, thermal paste. Yeah, now it pushes down there nicely. Then solder it back in. Then push it in. Finally, I'm gonna add some heat sinks to uh, some of the other chips. Uh, the most important one, or the one that get, gets hot, is uh, the CPU. This, is, uh, this has 8500 R3 from 1985. C chip is a 6581 R3 from 85. And then we have the PLA there. 
those get a little hot, so adding a couple of heat sinks. Um, the other chips, not that necessary. These heat sinks doesn't have any adhesive on them, so I just add a little bit of, uh, this is some heat resistant uh, silicone adhesive. Just a tiny amount there. Not too much. Should be possible to get them off eventually, sometime later. <laughs> this takes a little while to dry, so I can't, um, I'm not go I can't use uh, or power up this board until it's dried and I can't move it until it's dried or they will slide around. Then we have this keyboard and it uh, needs a little bit of uh, cleaning, <laughs> full of dust. It too, I take it out of uh, the case. Cracking screws here as well. Yes, very dirty inside, kind of gross here. Something has spilled, extremely full of dust and dirt. <laughs> yeah, something has spilled here, there. So I'm gonna pull off all uh, these keycaps so that I can clean them properly and I can also get to the keyboard plate and clean it up. That's not the most fun part, but uh, it has to be done. So check if all the springs are good and not corroded. And yeah, the first one at least seems uh, nice. Maybe I should wear gloves. I, I usually don't. <laughs> Just clean my hands afterwards. Actually, I always clean my hands after working here, uh, especially if I have been soldering because I handle uh, a leaded solder and uh, yeah, definitely you should clean your, your hands after uh, using leaded solder. All right, let me just pull off all these and then I'll be back and I'll show you a neat trick how to resurrect the keyboard where the keys doesn't work very well. Yes, and the space bar, it has this support rod as usual, and it has a bigger, uh, tougher spring, so I keep that uh, separately. And this just uh, pull it straight off or use a little uh, screwdriver. Be careful not to break the plastic tabs. Oh yes, <laughs> in good need of a cleaning. All right, so now I'm gonna take the keys and uh, the case parts down to my kitchen, clean it in uh, some uh, windows cleaner and soapy water, my proven method. And I'm gonna vacuum this and uh, afterwards we're gonna remove the back plate here and I'll show you that trick to revive um, the keys. So the keycaps and the case has been cleaned and uh, they are now sunbathing outside in the sun. A little natural retro brighting there. It takes a couple of days, but in the meantime, I can continue with this. I vacuumed the keyboard and it looks much better, but as you can see, there's some stains and that's something has been spilled. Juice or soda or something. <laughs> so while this keyboard, um, seems to work all right i didn't test all the keys i'm still gonna take off the back plate and try to revive it a little bit so that it uh, hopefully works better for a longer time just see if i can clean off this uh, dirt oh it's really hard yeah it's like uh, <laughs> sugar well, I'm gonna take uh, all the plungers off so I can clean this in uh, hot water afterwards. To do that, we need to uh, desolder uh, the caps lock key. And we need to remove all those uh, small screws. Obviously, I'm gonna do the same with the other keyboard as well, but I'll show you on this one. 
Uh, the caps lock key is of plastic, so you need to be quick when you desolder these, or else you will melt the plastic. <laughs> well, easier said than done. It's probably bent in the hole. Yes. Then all those little screws. So now the keyboard is uh, free and we can inspect the, the keyboard uh, circuit board and it's uh, yeah, a little bit dust here and there. So I'm going to clean this up with some alcohol and for this one I just do like this. These are probably also a little bit uh, dusty, so I'm just going to rinse them off in some uh, hot water. So all the keyboard uh, switches or connectors, they are uh, these black carbon pads. So you should not try to, <laughs> to wipe them off too hard or else you remove that uh, carbon. I just use a little uh, cotton swab here or pad and just gently wipe over just to remove the dust because when you have connection issues it's actually most of the time these plungers that are the problem they push down to those carbon pads however this rubber here it's a kind of conductive rubber and uh, you should uh, you can actually measure the resistance it should be under 100 ohms or thereabout however if this um, rubber gets dirty or yeah by age it actually conducts less current and therefore it doesn't register the key press as good so you can use a multimeter and just measure the resistance from one end to the other. I actually got a keyboard tester for the Commodore machines. I'm going to use that on the other machine, I think. Okay, the plungers, I'll just take them down and give them a little bath of soapy water. Okay, everything has been cleaned. And now I'm going to show you the trick I'm using to revive those rubber plungers or rubber pads you need something mildly abrasive not too hard and then you just rub it i have this plain sheet of paper that's enough just rub it a little bit until you see some blackness on the, the sheet like here and that's it you have uh, rubbed off the outermost layer do that for all of them it's a little bit of work but it goes quickly it's just uh, around 100 keys <laughs> no this has been working for me a couple of times at least i cannot promise you that it will work for you or that you won't somehow <laughs> manage to damage uh, the key plunger but um, yeah for me it's been working so i take my chances here no guarantees so that was uh, all and uh, that took like uh, three and a half minutes so for the other keyboard i'm gonna measure the resistance before and after just to see the difference now the very clean keyboard plastics just use a little uh, contact cleaner into the caps look so now it's time to assemble the keyboard again i have just put it on something to raise it up makes it easier to place uh, the plungers back if not you they're gonna stick up <laughs> like now <laughs> so that's all in and make sure you don't touch uh, the rubber with your finger it will make them fatty just make sure that everyone is down through their uh, hole and then we can place this back then 
there are some uh, guides that goes through some of the holes so yeah it slides right into position and then all the little screws then i just solder back these connectors So that was the keyboard, just need to place all uh, the springs and uh, the keycaps back onto it and uh, then I think we're ready to run a little diagnostics test on this machine to see that everything is working as it should. The keyboard is finished, let's uh, run some diagnostics on this machine. I have the full uh, testing harness here. So that's everything hooked up and uh, now just the um, diagnostics cartridge itself. All right, let's see what it tells us. The clocks on the CIA chips are uh, showing the same value, so those are seemingly okay. Yes, everything shows okay. And the seat. Yeah. All right, so this machine works 100%. I'm gonna let it run for a while just to see if anything changes. But then we are ready to continue to the second machine. But before that, I'm just gonna do a brief uh, testing of this machine with uh, some um, real software and uh, see if the keyboard works 100%. That diagnostics test only tests if there is a keyboard or not, not if uh, each individual test, uh, I mean key is uh, working. Yeah, the machine came out great, all cleaned up and uh, looks like new. Um, the retrobrighting, it did take away some of the yellowing on the keycaps, but uh, still not finished if there are more days of cold sun <laughs> i mean sun when it's cold outside then it's gonna continue for a couple of more days and that should be good enough no those um, kind of burn marks that i mentioned there's not really much you can do with that you could try and sand it down or something but you're never gonna get it looking as new again i guess okay keyboard yeah I'm barely touching the keys now, so they all work very nicely. Shift lock, yeah. This keyboard works perfectly fine. Restore, yes, perfect keyboard. Let's see if we can run a game or two. I have loaded the, the Kung Fu Flash cartridge now and uh, yeah, let's try out Super Mario. That's always a challenge for uh, <laughs> Commodore 64. Yeah. Well, I usually die right away. <laughs> Another one. Saxon. But this is not the Saxon I thought it was. I mean, the space game. This is uh, Saxon with uh, one X. <laughs> All right, another C64 saved from its uh, death and uh, yeah, works perfectly. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. 
no I'm probably gonna sell it but uh, I mean it works so nicely I might keep it and sell another one no over to this one which uh, looks <laughs> and feels a little bit worse so here we have uh, some stuff to be done I need to find a new key for it I need to remove that sticker clean it up test it see that everything works I'm gonna test it first with the harness diagnostics uh, before I clean it up and see uh, how it responds but I kid you not the first time I tested it it was completely dead okay so here we have some issues uh, we have some bad bad cassette bad serial port that's U1 and U2 that's the CIA chips but the seed seems okay but uh, these faults might be because of dirty uh, connectors I'm just gonna pull on the connectors a little bit just to see if that helps no still bad so if the cassette doesn't work the serial port doesn't work the user port doesn't work then uh, there's not much you can do with this machine I guess but uh, still it can be a false indication I need to clean it up first and also as you remembered the keyboard was uh, very bad some of the keys didn't work at all unless you hammer them real hard like the return key <laughs> all right I'm gonna open up the machine I'm not gonna show you all uh, the cleaning stuff I did before so this one is gonna go quicker if there's something faulty with it then I need to figure out what that is it seems to be able to load from uh, this image from uh, the Kung Fu flash at least someone mentioned in the comments when I showed this in the unboxing that it might be a special edition of the C64 not really sure it has um, the symbols on the side of the keys at least uh, I'm not the person that goes around remembering all the differences between all the different uh, revisions so can't tell oh my goodness yeah That's a large dust bunny. So the C64C has a little bit different arrangement with the keyboard and uh, stuff. Then it has these brackets. So let's take a peek. What is the motherboard? Oh, there's one screw there. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, copyright 1986 and it's a 254.66 full of uh, dust. So this one needs a uh, good cleaning. Yeah, so I'm just going to take out the, the motherboard and uh, clean it up a little bit. the whole family of the dust bunnies <laughs> so this uh, paper shield I'm just gonna throw it away same procedure this one and uh, everything I can clean is gonna be cleaned and then I'll be back to test Commodore keyboards I have this little simple device this was um, designed by Sven Petersen and uh, it can test the WIC-20 and the Commodore 64, C16, C128 and 128D keyboards and it simply does that by connecting uh, to a regular multimeter like this and you put it in resistance mode and then just uh, connect uh, your keyboard to the to the appropriate uh, contact and it's gonna show the resistance of um, the key presses so I'm gonna put it in uh, resistance mode and set the range then press the key yeah, and it shows uh, 160 ohms. 
depends on how hard you push. So if I push really hard, obviously it goes down. No, the re return key was particularly bad. Let's test that one. Oh yeah, it doesn't register at all. If I push really hard, no. Yeah, it just flashed there. As I understand it, you should have, uh, yeah, around 100 ohms, no more than that. So many of these keys are a little bit higher, but some are quite below, so. And the delete key doesn't work. And the clear home works fine. So yeah, that's one way you can test the keyboard. You could, of course, just take a multimeter <laughs> on the rubber of each key, but uh, that's a lot more work. So that's gonna be the same drill with uh, this keyboard. Gonna remove all the keycaps and use uh, that paper trick to revive uh, the keys. And these springs look a little bit more uh, grayish. Don't know if that's because of corrosion or that was how they were. Just gonna look for a rust. Yes, definitely some of the springs have uh, rusted. So this has had some uh, moist for sure. And uh, many springs are very gray or dull. So I'm gonna treat those with some uh, vinegar, I think. Oh, look at that. That's gross. <laughs> 35 years old. Uh, dust and dirt. Okay, I'm going to treat the springs with some uh, vinegar. This is 35% uh, for cleaning, not for consuming. So that will remove the rust. In a couple of minutes it will start uh, reacting and bubbling and then they will go a little bit black, but uh, that doesn't matter. Keycaps I'm going to spray with uh, windows cleaner and then regular dishwashing soap in hot water. Now it's bubbling real good. I'll leave it there for half an hour I think. Uh, yeah, there's even some uh, dust bunnies <laughs> inside the keyboard too, so needs a little bit of cleaning. So for the missing key, I am trying to buy the missing key. However, I didn't find any yet. I don't have a spare C64C keyboard lying around. So I was thinking about uh, just printing it and I found this model. There aren't many 3D models of keys available. Uh, this one is uh, on Thingiverse. Not sure if it's gonna fit, you know, all the keys on a C64 keyboard are different, or at least um, many of the keys are different. They are, they are angled differently. So I'm gonna try to print this. I'm gonna print it in both directions, both up and down and this way. So I'm just gonna copy so that I have two and then I'm gonna flip this like that. So I'm gonna choose the best variant then. So the two parts printed successfully, however, since this was printed upside down, there's no support material in it because if you print a part uh, that is hollow like this it needs to fill uh, the printer needs to fill um, that space with some support material however on the top here it's uh, not completely flat either so there's a little bit of support material and that looks a little bit ugly it's not easy to get off However, this one that was printed uh, this way um, looks better on the top. However, <laughs> this side is filled with uh, support material and that can be hard to uh, remove.
No, this center part is uh, the worst thing to get out. Okay. There you go. So, now that looks almost the same. A little bit of light sanding. Let's see if one of these fits. Just need to assemble uh, the keyboard first. It's all been cleaned and uh, should be uh, nice. Let's see how the new key fits. I already have a lot of spare plungers and uh, springs, but not the keys. The thing is, does it stick to uh, the plunger? Oh, it's a little bit loose. Yeah, quite loose. <coughs> Uh, let me try the other one that didn't have that support material. Yeah, that sits better. Okay, so I'm going to use this one then. Um, yeah, functionality over beauty, I guess. It's uh, just temporary anyway until I find an um, original key. But the color isn't that way off. A little bit lighter but uh, otherwise okay the key is maybe a little bit taller than the original one millimeter taller okay so this keyboard has been revived uh, yeah let's see if uh, there's any change in the resistance <laughs> okay so um, Some of the keys obviously don't work still, um, even if I clean them. There was an issue with the return key and it's still, but now all the plungers have been <laughs> randomly uh, rearranged. So, so I think simply there's some break in this keyboard. And pushing hard doesn't help. Yeah, maybe there's a break in the wires or in the keyboard membrane itself, but uh, that's going to give me a lot of more work. Well, <laughs> maybe it's just bad contact. I'm not really sure here. Well, before I conclude on anything here, I'm just going to hook it up to the real machine and see if it's the same there. Use a little bit of uh, contact cleaner on this contact. I didn't see anything wrong when I had the PCB out, but uh, you never know. So what do we have here? Yeah, the keyboard <laughs> works fine. Not really sure what happened with that keyboard tester. Every, every key works just fine. I'm barely touching. Probably some bad contact somewhere in um, that keyboard tester. All right, so this keyboard is uh, revived then. Nice. All right then, let's see what uh, the diagnostics test tells us now. I cleaned up um, the whole PCB and all the contacts and everything. Yeah, should be perfect now. Do we still have some errors? Yes, we still have uh, faulty U1 and U2, which is the CIA chips. Let's try this uh, Dr. 64. Yeah, same with that. It has a bad on interrupt and uh, cassette and serial bus. Yeah, so I think this machine has a fault. All those faults are directly uh, linked to the two CIA chips here. And uh, yeah, I think I'm simply gonna desolder them and try with some working ones. Not sure if I have any spares uh, anymore, but uh, at least we can test if uh, those are the issue. Oh no, I didn't uh, watch <laughs> the outdoors. <laughs> it started snowing, but it's uh, dry snow, so I think that's okay. Before I start desoldering some chips, I just want to verify, does it really not work with the cassette? Uh, I mean, the cassette is not controlled by the CIA chips, uh, I think. I think the cassette is uh, directly connected to some IO ports on the CPU. Uh, let's try and load the tape here. Seems to react normally. 
Nope, it actually never found anything on the tape. I waited for a couple of minutes and I retried. There is no reaction here and this is a tape I have used uh, many times before. I just tested with another cassette recorder and it's the same. Uh, seems like uh, the 9 volt and uh, the motor control and stuff is working but uh, cannot read any data. I guess that's the fault, that's not uh, caused by the CIA chips. Need to come back to that. I also want to check that the um, disk is working or not and this is my 1581 which I built myself. If you didn't see that uh, video series you should definitely check it out. Uh, yeah let's see if we can load anything from disk then. Hmm nope nothing however I don't remember if I uh, set this to device 9. Same there. No, definitely disk access is not working on this. And uh, yeah, that could of course come from many things, but uh, seems like the diagnostics test is correct and it indicated both the CIA chips. I mean, at least one of them is partially working because the keyboard is working, but uh, it could be partially faulty. I'm gonna check and see if there's anything, um, yeah that looks wrong physically. If not, I'm gonna desolder the chips and place them into sockets and try with some other chips. So I'm just checking as the signals to the CA to and from the CA chips to see that everything looks uh, normal. And I checked the first one and everything looked uh, all right. It looked like normal signals for the most part. Uh, those pins that has a signal Everything looked uh, normal as far as I could see uh, at a glance. Uh, so I'm gonna desolder those chips. All right, those chips were a pain to get off. <laughs> I had to use a hot air gun, but uh, they came eventually and no damages. sockets are in uh, now I'm just gonna place the same chips back again so that we can check if we get the same uh, result these are a little bit short legs yeah they sit firmly there yes exactly the same result and now one thing you can do is actually to swap those two CIA chips because they are exactly the same chip and see if we get any difference. Maybe some tests will pass then and some don't. Now it's not necessarily that it is uh, the CIA chip's fault. It might be something else. It might be some uh, other control chips, logic chips. But no, it's still the same. Here's another CIA chip I took from another machine. It is supposed to be good, but still exactly the same. So that makes me think it's nothing wrong with the CIA chips. This is something else. So uh, we need to dig deeper. Obviously it could be the CPU. It could also be uh, the kernel ROM. But uh, I don't know for sure. However, this video became quite long now, I think. So I think I'm gonna end it here and then I'm gonna continue with another episode where we try to repair this machine. All right, that was it for this video. Sorry I didn't conclude with this machine. <laughs> it simply became too much work to <laughs> fix up two machines in one video. So I'm gonna split it into two and hopefully I'll find a resolution in the next episode. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and uh, thanks for your subscriptions and the likes and a special thanks to my patrons and the members. See you next time. Bye bye.